My name is Dr. Mary Brunette. I'm an addiction psychiatrist, and I'm an associate professor of psychiatry at the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth. I'm here to talk with you about nicotine replacement therapy. Nicotine replacement therapy includes nicotine that comes from tobacco. It is delivered in safe, FDA-regulated forms in known doses that reduce withdrawal. Many forms are available over-the-counter in drugstores. Depending upon how much people use, the cost is about $100 a month, usually less than people spend on their cigarettes. Many state telephone counseling lines, called quit lines, will provide free nicotine replacement therapy to people who want to try to quit. I will focus today on forms of nicotine replacement therapy that are available over-the-counter in drugstores. There is a patch that people put on their arm each day, there's gum that people put in their mouth and chew, or there's a lozenge that's like a cough drop. Using one patch on the arm each day, in combination with gum or lozenge at times when you know urges will occur, is the most effective method of using nicotine replacement therapy. Now, many people who have tried it feel that it didn't work for them, but this may be because they didn't use it correctly or they didn't use a high enough dose. Nicotine replacement therapy really works quite well when people use it correctly. It increases people's willpower as they try to quit. Let's talk about the patch first. The patch comes in 21 milligram doses that are used for people who smoke more than half a pack a day. The package states to use a patch on the arm each day, starting on your quit day, for six weeks. Then taper down by using 14 milligram patches each day for two weeks, then the seven milligram patch each day for two weeks. The directions now say people can keep using the patch even if they slip and have a cigarette, and they can use them for longer periods of time if needed to quit. People put the patch on first thing in the morning after washing and drying the area of skin where they plan to put the patch. It can be placed anywhere on the upper body, between the neck and the waist, but the best place is on a part of the arm that doesn't have much hair. Take a patch out of the box, open its package, peel off the cover, place it on the arm and press for 10 seconds to make sure it's sticking fully. People who smoke during the night should leave the patch on all day and all night and take it off in the morning before they put on a new one. People who find they have vivid dreams at night while using the patch should take it off before they go to bed. The patch is designed to deliver most of its nicotine through the skin over the course of one day. It takes about an hour or more for the nicotine to slowly build up in the body in contrast to when you smoke and you get a really rapid burst of nicotine. For that reason, the patch is not addictive. Now, people who smoke first thing in the morning may want to set their alarm early to put the patch on or use a gum or lozenge right when they get up in the morning so that they avoid smoking first thing in the morning. Now it's not uncommon for the skin under the patch to turn a little red or to be a little itchy from the nicotine or from the adhesive. If a person gets some irritation on their skin, they can try putting each patch on a different part of the body each day, or they can try a lower dose of the patch. Now let's talk about nicotine replacement gum and lozenge. They come in two milligram and four milligram doses. People who smoke more than half a pack a day or who smoke within 30 minutes after they get up should use the four milligram dose. The gum and the lozenge should be used at least nine times a day and they can be used every hour. People should avoid drinking or eating 15 minutes before they use the gum or lozenge because anything acidic in the mouth like coffee or orange juice will prevent the absorption of nicotine through the lining of your mouth. To use the gum, people can chew the gum for a little bit until they feel a tingly flavor coming out. Then they park the gum between their gum and their cheek for a few minutes. Nicotine coming out of the gum will be absorbed through the lining of the cheek into the bloodstream over the course of around 10 minutes. It builds up gradually, unlike cigarettes. So again, gum and lozenge are not addictive. When a person can no longer taste the tingly nicotine coming out of the gum, they chew it again until they have that taste coming out and then they park the gum again and let it sit for a while. People repeat this process for about 15 minutes. 
again, it takes 10 or 15 minutes for the nicotine to really build up in the bloodstream, which is different from the cigarette, which gets into the bloodstream immediately. People should move the gum or the lozenge around in their mouth to avoid irritation in any one part of the mouth. And here's an important point. Many people don't realize they're not supposed to swallow the nicotine that comes from the gum. If you swallow it, the nicotine just goes into your stomach and causes stomach upset, and it gets broken down rather than absorbed into your bloodstream. So it's important to let that nicotine sit in your mouth and get absorbed through the lining of your cheek. Now the lozenge is like a cough drop or a hard candy. To use it, the person sucks on it until they taste some nicotine coming out of it. Then they also park that between their gum and the lining of their cheek. Just like the gum, the nicotine is gonna come out of the lozenge and get absorbed through the lining of the cheek. If people leave the gum or lozenge in one spot of their mouth, it can cause irritation, so it's best to move it around to different parts of your gum and cheek. The lozenges are good for people who have sensitive teeth or dentures or who don't like gum. Lozenges and gum both come in a variety of flavors. Using two kinds of nicotine replacement therapy is more effective than just one. People should try using a patch on their arm every day and a gum or lozenge in their mouth throughout the day as they experience urges. Also, people should use the gum or lozenge a half hour before they expect to be in situations that will trigger urges. Remember, it takes an hour or two for the patch to kick in, and it takes 15 or 20 minutes for the gum or lozenge to really kick in. People should have a patch at their bedside to put on in the morning and pop a lozenge or gum in their mouth right away in order to avoid that first cigarette in the morning. People can start using gum or lozenge to replace cigarettes anytime they want. People start using the patch on their quit date. Many people wonder whether nicotine replacement therapy is really safe. When it first came out, a person using it smoked while they had the patch on and had a heart attack. So people were really worried that it might cause heart attacks if you smoke while you're using the patch. To figure out if this was really true, researchers brought smokers into a lab and hooked them up to heart monitors. They placed three nicotine patches on their arms and they had them smoke heavily. What they found was that the nicotine in the bloodstream did not cause heart attacks, but it did increase people's blood pressure and their heart rate. So all smokers get the effect of having their blood pressure and heart rate increased by the nicotine in cigarettes, and nicotine replacement therapy also will have that effect. If a person has very high blood pressure or very high heart rate, they should get treatment from their doctor right away, and quitting smoking will be really important for their health. Using nicotine replacement therapy is now proven to be perfectly safe, including for people with heart diseases. However, if people use too much nicotine, either by smoking or by using nicotine replacement therapy or by both, they may feel sick to their stomach or dizzy or have a fast heart rate. If that happens, they simply need to stop. Either stop smoking or remove the patch or remove the gum or lozenge. Nicotine replacement therapy is a safe method to reduce urges to smoke and withdrawal symptoms while people cut down and quit. It improves people's chances of quitting for good, but most people still have to put effort into changing their smoking habit. Education and counseling can help people learn skills to do that. If you haven't seen my video on nicotine and nicotine withdrawal, you should check it out. It will help you understand why nicotine replacement therapy works so well. Nicotine replacement therapy reduces nicotine withdrawal while it replaces the nicotine as people cut down and quit smoking. Nicotine replacement therapy makes quitting more tolerable for people, and it probably helps people remember to use coping skills when they have urges to smoke. However, nicotine replacement therapy won't suppress all thoughts about smoking, so people will need to figure out strategies to cope with urges in addition to using nicotine replacement therapy. Check out my other videos to learn more. Thanks for joining me.